Well, hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, I haven't done much lately, as you know, if you've been paying any attention. Um, I did, I did film some content for smoking a chuck roast, but I don't know how good it is, and I haven't, I've been too lazy to edit it, so I might do that one day. Let me know if you'd be interested in that or not. Anyway, I thought we'd do something different today. I saw some videos the last couple of weeks that bothered me a little. There were guys talking about 351 Cleveland cylinder heads and all of the myths and rumors and misinformation. A couple of them, guys had no idea what they were talking about, but betrayed themselves as experts. When you go in the comments and you try to tell them what they did wrong, you know, nice about it and say well this point you made was really not right and it was because of this and they respond rather condescending it's a little irritating so i figured instead of talking about the entire cylinder head we would just pick one point and we would focus on that for today so here we have 351 cleveland Two barrel head. So it's called a two barrel head for those that don't know. You don't know anything about Cleveland's. This is called a two barrel head because it came with a two barrel carburetor. You could not get a motor with these cylinder heads from the factory with a four barrel carburetor. They didn't sell it. If you wanted a four barrel carburetor, it came with these heads. These heads are the ones that have the most misinformation and myths about. First thing you'll hear is intake ports are too big. They need 9,000 RPM. We're not even going to get into that right now because that's just way wrong. We're going to focus on the exhaust side. I'm no expert. I'm not even going to claim to be an expert. I'm far from an expert. But what I do have is over 30 years of running these cylinder heads on the street and on the track pretty much non-stop. I mean, I've been racing for 32 years almost, and I haven't missed a year. I mean, I have raced every year in that time frame. I've broken a lot of stuff. I've tried a lot of things. I've talked to a lot of people who had the same experiences on stuff. I've learned stuff from talking to those people. I'm not going to name drop... I mean, let's face it, name dropping in a video, that's just lame. And, and I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I don't have to, I'm not doing it. It's, it's corny, it's cheesy, it's lame. I ain't doing it. So, let's focus on this cylinder head. Actually, so as you can see, big difference in the two ports. Square port, oval port. Everybody thinks, the misinformed think, this port's better. It's not better. It's smaller. It flows less. This port, fully ported, this one, is a matter of fact. Ported flows about 190 CFM at 500. At 600, it still flows 190. At 700, it still flows 190. It flatlines. That's it. That's all it's got. You can't lay the short turn back very much because it's just too short and there's water under there. It's got a 165 exhaust valve, 1.65. You could probably put a bigger valve in it and help that a little bit, open the bowl area up more. But I'm not an expert porter, far from it. And I tend to be on the conservative side because there's water in there. And if you hit water, you've just ruined it. It's cast iron, nobody wants to fix it. So I tend to be conservative. So yeah, somebody could probably get more CFM out of them. Although I will say, I got 190 CFM out of this port. And it was flowed by a fella at the time that was doing Nitro Harley cylinder heads. So he knew what he was doing, and his bench was pretty accurate. Back before there was internet, 
we had magazines to get our information from. And a lot of times that was wrong because they, a lot of them turned into, they were just a paid advertisement for somebody's product and weren't really interested in telling the truth. They were just interested in promoting the product so they could sell parts. And so 190 CFM, it's not bad. I mean, it, it's, that's a decent amount until you realize that this port flows 185 or so, give or take. Stop. Bone stop. It'll flow right around 180 to 185. That's not bad until you look at, you know, how big the port is. It's a 1.71 exhaust valve. I mean, that's a big exhaust valve. That's a big port. Yep, both of these are open chambered heads, so we're comparing apples to apples here. All right, so it'll go 185 stock. You clean the bowl up. You'll get right around 200, 205. I've done it several times. All right, not bad. Still not great. All right, so now you open the port up. You raise the roof. You, you open the, you start working on the short turn. Um, like I said, and I'm conservative. I got 230 CFM out of this head, that same flow bench without a pipe. Pipe adds, I don't know, I've heard 10% and that seems high to me, but I've seen professionally ported cylinder heads that'll flow 240 with a pipe, maybe 245. So I'm right there with them. That's not bad. Everybody says, well, the port's too big and all of this space here, that's dead space. It's not dead space. You need to remember the guys in 1968 that were designing this, the engineers, these guys were some of the brightest in their field that weren't trying to figure out how to put a man on the moon. They were smart dudes. They were Harvard graduates. They were Yale graduates. They were, they were smart guys. And they knew this cylinder head was going to go in 69, maybe 68, 70 Mustang, depending on how soon they got the stuff done. Probably not 68. I just guessed on that. Um, and the shock towers were in the way. So you couldn't run you know, pipe straight out from there. And make it fit which is what everybody says you need to do they said oh you need to cut this off put the high port plate on it all right that helps flow but for 90 percent of the guys that are running these things at the drag strip your your weekend warrior your bracket guy like me um that's not necessary and it's not necessary because the port will flow 230 cfm the pro stock guys did it because their intake side flowed 360 or more, and they were turning the motors 10,000 RPM. They needed to get every bit that they could on this side to work. 230 CFM, that's probably going to support 700 horsepower. I mean, realistically, what bracket guy is going to run an iron head and make more than 700 horsepower? You get into that range, you, you probably need to be looking at an aluminum head anyway. I mean, it'll do it. I mean, it, it, it'll flow that. So you don't need the high port plates. You don't need them. The area where most guys make a mistake is they put too small of a header on it. Let's backtrack. So they said, this is dead space. You need to fill this. Block all of this off. Hang on. So all of those of you that around my age that remember Super Ford, you remember these things, port plates. Here's what they do. They fill in that dead space. Well, you know what happens when you put these in and you take the car to the racetrack? It slows down a tenth. I don't it. I talked to an NHRA. I talked to a fella that ran NHRA mod back in the 90s. I think it kind of morphed into what ended up being pro mod nhra did away with it um he tried them too he did them at the same day i did them on a different day we ran the car for a while we bought these because hey these were the hot ticket these were going to fix the exhaust flow according to the article in super ford magazine so we bolted them in we put these things in we knew about what the car was going to run we'd been running it for over a year and you know what it did it slowed down a tenth we ran it for a while. We ran it probably the rest of the year. And then next year, we pulled them out. Well, a modified driver that I talked to, name drop, which we're not going to do, 
he told me they did it at the same time. They did it all. They did it. He told me they tried it as well. They, except they actually did it the same day. They went to the racetrack, made a pass, came back, pulled the headers off, put those plates in, put the headers back on because they couldn't cut the they couldn't cut that off and put a high port plate on it. So they were limited. They ran the card and it slowed down a tenth. And he said they made a couple of passes. Tenth never came back. They tuned some stuff and it never came back. Pulled the headers off, took the plates out, went back, made another pass. Headers came the the tenth made another pass. The tenth came back. He said they threw them in the trash before they left. Never even took them home. He said they're junk. He said they're snake oil. I agree with him. I had the same exact experience, and I'm, you know, a rural Iowa country boy that don't know squat. You know, so when a guy that's an NHRA record holder running in the eights with an iron head, spinning 9,000 RPM, tells me they don't work, I'm going to believe him. So, they don't work. As I said before, here's, here's a visual aid. As soon as this comes out, it makes a bend right away. I don't know what the Ford engineers were doing. I don't know what those guys were doing because, you know, they're the... Harvard grads, but this is not dead space. It's proven by when you put these in, it slows down. Where I think most guys make a mistake is they put too small of a header on it. This is a two and an eighth inch primary header. The collector bolts right here. That's a short primary length. Stick with me. I had a 377 in the car. It ran consistently low 630s, high 620s in the 8th. I ran it that way for a couple of years. Had hooker super comps on it. Inch and 7 eighths primaries. Not these. Tuned primaries. You know, all the tubes the same length. You know, supposed to be better. Alright. It ran pretty good. The headers got old. I found these. Headman Hustler race header. Found them for sale. Fella said he'd had them on the car. He didn't have them on the car. If you've managed to buy a set of these for a 6970 Mustang and you go to put them on, they are not going to bolt right on. There are some things you have to change to make these fit. Been there, done that. Anyway, so my super comps got rusty. Pulled them off, managed to get these on, which was a royal hassle. I got them on, and I mean, you can see that that, I mean, it makes it, it, it turns as soon as it, as soon as it comes out of the head. I put those on, the car picked up six, seven hundredths consistently in the eighth. That's a tenth and a quarter. By simply going to a bigger header tube, two and an eighth inch primary. There's not a computer program in the world that will tell you a 377 inch small block turning 7,400 RPM needs more than an inch in a seven eighths primary. There's not one. You won't do it. It'll tell you this is too big. That it's too big of a pipe, and it's not going to work, especially being not equal length. I picked up six seven hundreds. Rest of the year, all the next year, ground clearance with them sucked. So I eventually took them off, put Hooker Super Comps back on it, a new set of Hooker Super Comps. Car slowed down six seven hundreds pretty consistently. That's what you call ABA testing. That's how you verify results. And results say, these are faster. It likes the big tube. Why does it like the big tube? I don't know. There's rumor that Ford was trying to, the engineers want, were talking about the flow coming up and hitting here and it making some sort of a weird turn. Therefore, it was using this pot. I don't know. They're the engineers, not me. All I know is, you fill this, it loses power. You put a bigger header on it, it makes more power. You put what's technically too big of a header on it, it makes more power. And that's just, in my world, it's fact. Um, I've done it. I mean, a couple of times. So it's hard to, it's hard to argue with it because I've, I've tried it. I've done it. So if you hear if you hear somebody saying this is the better head because of velocity change the channel them them guys don't know what they're talking about
Smaller, less CFM. Bigger, more CFM. Makes more horsepower. Makes less horsepower. Tried it. I've run these on the same short block as I've run these on. These were way faster. Pretty much the same combination. Um, we'll get into that later. That's the intake port issue there, I believe. But anyway, let me know if you want to hear more of this kind of stuff because, like I said, I've got 30 years of running these things. And I think there's just a lot of guys out there that like to talk loud and pretend that they know a lot when all they're doing is repeating what they've been told. They haven't really tried anything. I've gone pretty fast with some pretty junk parts and doesn't make I'm doesn't mean I'm smarter than anybody else. It means I've broken a lot of shit trying to get there. Um, so anyway, if you like this stuff, if you want to see more about these cylinder heads and the what how what I think of the combustion chamber difference, what I think of all of this, and what I think of these ports versus those ports, you know, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there's going to be some Cleveland guys that watch this that are going to get their feathers ruffled a little bit because, you know, they've been told all of their Cleveland life that, oh, this is dead air. You have to put the high port plate on it. You can't put a high port plate in that car. You can't do it with shock towers. It ain't going to fit. And 230 CFM is plenty. I mean, Anyway, I've rambled on a lot longer than I intended to. That was why I wanted to limit it to just the exhaust ports because I knew if I got into everything else, it was going to take way too long. And y'all don't want to listen to all of Y'all don't want to listen to 40 minutes of me talking about cylinder heads. Not all in one shot, at least. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to hear more. And I will... I'll talk to you later. Drop a like down below. Leave a comment. Even if it's that you just watched it, share the video for me. Um, try to get some more subscribers. Try to get me bumped up the algorithm a little bit better. But anyway, like, follow, subscribe, share, you know, do all that stuff. And we'll be back later. And that's only like 38 degrees right now. And this cylinder head is really cold. I got to go put some gloves on. <laughs>